from women who snuck out of jail for sanity's sake to those who were simply desperate for freedom, here are nine stories of women who escaped from prison. Number 9. Deborah Gavin It's easy to think that all prisoners who attempt to escape prison do it because they want freedom, and many do it for that exact reason. But in the case of Deborah Gavin, there was a much purer reason for her escape. This happened in 1974 at the Georgia Women's Correctional Institution in Baldwin County. Gavin was arrested for armed robbery and convicted of the crime, so her time in prison was just. She succeeded in escaping the institution multiple times. When she escaped yet again in 1974, she wasn't caught for quite some time. Thanks to her newfound freedom, Gavin traveled from Georgia to Texas, where she started a new life, got married, had some kids, and lived as a free woman for 33 years. That is, until local authorities found out that she was an escaped prisoner and arrested her. Gavin claimed that she fled the institution the final time to escape the guards, who were forcing inmates to sleep with them. According to her accusations, if an inmate didn't agree to sleep with a guard, they forced themselves upon her. This opened a massive investigation, which was bolstered by lawsuits filed in the 90s that contained similar allegations about guards sleeping with the inmates. After her story became known, many people wrote to the governor of Texas to campaign against Deborah's potential extradition to Georgia. The story also captured the attention of the media. Due to these factors, her case was closed, and she did not return to the Georgia institution. Number 8. Margaret B. Smith Margaret B. Smith was caught and convicted of writing bogus checks in the amount of $200 each in 1974. $200 may not seem like a lot of money now, but it was back then and forging checks is a serious crime. She was sentenced to four years at the Correctional Institution for Women in Raleigh, North Carolina. Due to good behavior, Smith was allowed to serve the final months of her sentence at a halfway house, during which time she escaped. According to Smith, she received a visit from her then seven-year-old daughter, who told her that something bad was happening within the family, prompting her to leave in order to protect them. Upon escaping, she fled to Florida and changed her name. Later on, Smith returned to her hometown of Fayetteville to be with her family. She wasn't free forever, though. In 2015, a joint task force was formed, and they returned Smith to prison. The state had created the task force to try and catch all escaped prisoners from North Carolina, and it just so happened that Smith was on the list. To this day, Smith hasn't divulged exactly what her daughter told her to make her flee the halfway house months before her prison sentence was up, and we'll likely never know. Number 7. Neontic 5 In 1984, there was only one women's correctional facility in northern Connecticut. It was called Neontic Correctional, and it had very loose security measures. That year, five women slipped through the bars of a prison window and walked off the grounds with no obstacles. The facility had an open yard, meaning that there were no fences or guards to watch over things because they truly believed that no one would escape. The escape of the five women was admittedly a bit of a magic act even to this day. As noted, the women slipped through the bars, but the bars were less than 8 inches apart and 15 inches high. People have tried and been unable to figure out exactly how they accomplished such a tight squeeze. Whatever their chosen method was, it worked, and they had a great head start, as they weren't reported as missing until the prison staff conducted a bed check much later on. Sadly for the five women, they were caught within 10 days of their breakout. Two of the ladies were caught the very next day, in fact, and by the time the first four had been caught, the fifth one simply decided to turn herself in. What do you think of these women who broke out? Smart? Careless? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you're new here because we have lots more fun videos coming up. Number 6. Judy Lynn Heyman Judy Lynn Heyman was serving a maximum two-year sentence in the Women's Huron Valley Correctional Facility in Pittsfield Township, Michigan for stealing clothing from a store. About halfway through her sentence in 1977, the 23-year-old escaped from the prison and she evaded authorities for decades. In fact, she wasn't caught until 27 years later. Heyman wasn't in Michigan when she was caught. She was in San Diego, California, and she was using the alias Jamie Lewis, which she had changed her name to in 1983, further helping her evade the authorities. When Michigan tried to extradite Heyman back to the state to ensure she finished her sentence from 1977, she fought back, claiming that she had actually turned herself into the authorities in California in 1982, before she had changed her name. It turned out that she was telling the truth. 
and when a judge saw this, he changed her sentence to time served, and she was officially considered free. In Heyman's case, her escape actually was successful in both the short and long term. Number 5. Samantha Lopez Samantha Lopez was an accomplice in a bank robbery that happened in Georgia. After getting caught, she was sentenced to 50 years in federal prison, which was to be carried out in Dublin, California. While serving her time, Lopez met a man named Ronald McIntosh. He was in the same prison, which housed both male and female inmates for wire fraud. McIntosh, a former Army helicopter pilot, was set to be released the following year. The two fell in love and decided to escape prison together. McIntosh got the first crack at it in 1986 as he was being transferred to another facility. Knowing that his love was still in prison, he hijacked a helicopter and went back to retrieve her. Dramatic? Yes. Long-lasting? No. Ironically, while attempting to buy wedding rings, McIntosh used an account that the government was monitoring, and they were caught. They did indeed get married via a chaplain in the courthouse they were going to be sentenced in. Lopez claimed that she escaped because prison officials had threatened her life, and McIntosh claimed that his behavior was due partially to the post-traumatic stress syndrome he suffered as a result of his service in the Vietnam War. But if the jury sympathized with their respective plights, it wasn't enough to let them off the hook. In 1987, both were found guilty of their helicopter escape. Number 4. Susan Lefebvre On the surface, Marie Walsh was your typical housewife. She had a husband and some kids, and she was living the dream in a very nice house. But one day, police officers stopped at her house to ask her a question. Are you Susan Lefebvre? It turned out that Marie Walsh wasn't her real name. The woman in question was, in fact, Susan Lefebvre, an escaped prisoner. She had fled Michigan in 1976 when she escaped from prison after serving one year of a near 20-year sentence for a drug charge. She not only got out of prison, but thanks to her grandfather, she was driven away before authorities could find her. Eventually, she made her way to California, where she eventually met her husband and lived happily with him for 32 years. After being caught, Walsh Lefebvre noted that her original charges weren't what they seemed to be. She wasn't a drug dealer, which was implied by the official charge. She just used the drugs for recreation, at least according to her. After Lefebvre got a new attorney, the judge waived these charges related to her prison escape and gave her two years of probation. Not a bad deal, all things considered, but the rest of the woman's original sentence was up to the Michigan Parole Board. Luckily for Lefebvre, they dropped the charges, mainly because she didn't use drugs again and became a functioning member of society, which was apparently all they wanted for her. Number 3. Sarah Jo Pender At her trial, Sarah Jo Pender was called the female Charles Manson because she apparently had manipulated and masterminded the death of two people. In 2000, Pender attended a concert and met a man named Richard Hull, who was not only a convicted felon, he was also a drug dealer. Later on, they entered a relationship and got a house in Indianapolis, which they shared with Andrew Cataldi and Tricia Nordman. At some point, Pender bought a shotgun and left it in the house, and later on, Hull took that shotgun and killed Cataldi and Nordman. Pender claimed that she was scared for her life and thus helped Hull dispose of the bodies, not report the crime, and carry on as if nothing had happened. However, after being arrested for helping with the murders, evidence arose indicating that it was Pender's idea to commit the murders in the first place. After being convicted, she manipulated a correctional officer named Scott Spittler into helping her escape from prison, along with her former cellmate Jamie Long. Pender didn't remain out for too long, though, as she was later caught in Chicago after getting a new name and life for herself. She's still in prison to this day. Number 2. Lynette Squeaky From Lynette Squeaky Fromm is somewhat of a legend in her own right, as she was one of Charles Manson's most loyal associates as a member of his Helter Skelter family. This family of killers was arrested in 1969, except for Fromm, who avoided being arrested because she wasn't identified at the murder scenes. Her loyalty to Manson continued as he was tried for murder, convicted, and then sent from prison to prison. She was known for camping outside the courtrooms and moving from town to town wherever Manson was. Eventually, though, Fromm was arrested, but not for the Manson murders. In 1975, she pulled a gun on Gerald Ford, the President of the United States. Her attempt to kill him was foiled, but she was caught and arrested for her attempted assassination. She went to prison, but later broke out because she heard that Charles Manson had been diagnosed with cancer, and she wanted to be with him during his difficult time. Eventually, she was captured, put back in jail, and remained there until 2009, where she was released on parole. Number 1. Asata Shakur 
Asada Shakur was a member of the Black Liberation Army and a well-known political activist, and she wasn't afraid to go to extremes for the causes she believed in. In 1973, there was an altercation on the New Jersey Turnpike between an officer and a Black Liberation Army member, and both were killed in the shootout. Shakur was later charged with killing the officer as well as several other felonies and was sentenced to life in prison. Shakur didn't plan her escape, the members of the Black Liberation Army did, even going so far as to kidnap guards at the prison to secure her escape route. And it worked. Using some cloak and dagger, they were able to free her from the prison and get her to some safe houses, which she used until she fled to Cuba under the protection of political asylum, which the country granted her. The FBI was so driven to get her that they put a $1 million reward out for her capture and return. Then, in 2013, she was put on the most wanted terrorist list. Shakur was the first woman ever to be put on that list. She remains in Cuba to this day. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these escapees? Are you amazed that some of their escapes worked? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.